What's going on guys? Back here for Project Civic Wagon. Trying to stop uh, some more oil leaks on this vehicle. Now you can see this is where my wagon is parked. And over the last couple of weeks, you see all this fresh oil. You can see the oil is only on this side now. And in correlation, that's dripping directly off the oil pan. It's not gonna be perfect because I move the car back and forth almost every couple of days. But generally it's in that area now. Before I changed the transmission, we used to have leaks on this side also from the transmission. But you can see now the transmission is dry. It's no longer leaking from the transmission. We're gonna remove the exhaust manifold and replace the oil pan gasket. And when we replace it, we're going to put on a DC header also. Next, we're gonna rem remove the oil pan, but you need to remove the lower part of the exhaust manifold. If you have a, an OEM exhaust manifold, down here you're gonna see there's three 14 millimeter nuts. One's here, one's gonna be on the opposite side, and there's one right there. You can remove those three. You have the 14 millimeter bolt with the 12 millimeter nut. Also two 12 millimeter nuts here holding the bracket for the exhaust manifold support. Now we're gonna remove the top portion of the exhaust manifold. First we're gonna need to get this air tube out of the way. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one right here, one right there. For the O2 sensor, I prefer to disconnect it here rather than pulling it out at the actual socket itself. It's easier just to disconnect it, and then when we pull the top of the exhaust manifold off, it's so much easier to get it out with the O2 sensor socket. We need to get the heat shield removed. One, two, three, four, all 12 millimeter bolts. Now I know you think you might wanna go ahead and start removing all of these, but first, down here, this little bracket, let me show you from the bottom side. We need to get this 14 millimeter bolt removed. This holds the bottom of the exhaust manifold to the engine block. Here you can see how, how dirty this motor is. I'm gonna take off the AC bracket just so I can clean the block. I'm gonna take it to the car wash right now and just spray it down with the pressure washer after I get the header installed and the oil pan cleaned up. Just wanna get all of this off as, po as much as possible. The next thing we need to do is get the oil pan removed. Handful of 10 millimeter bolts and nuts which surround the entire oil pan. And also this plate, I cannot remember. I left this plate off when I did my transmission swap. I'm happy, I cannot seem to get it back in. Hmm, I think I'm gonna have to actually pull the axle out just so I can slide this back up when I wanna reinsert it. But there's also, see how there's a hole there? There's a 10 millimeter that goes there and one on this side which attach it to the oil pan. I'm gonna pull my axle real quick just out of the socket and that'll give me a little bit more room. I'm gonna leave it like that until I'm completed putting the oil pan back onto the vehicle. Get your oil pan dropped. Let's get the old gasket off. It might be on there. Very, very difficult to get off sometimes. Might take a little bit, and then I'm gonna clean it up as much as possible too. Very dirty and oily everywhere. Try to clean up your oil pan as much as possible. That way, if it does get dirty after we've replaced the oil pan gasket, we can see if it's still leaking and from what area. I cleaned off the plate and the oil pan gasket as much as possible. It looks wet here because that's like where the oil is. I was wiping it down with a rag. And before reinstalling, go ahead and wipe down this entire section where the oil pan mates to the engine block. You want it to be as clean and dry as possible. The oil pan gasket is part number 11251. P01004. According to the service manual, you need to apply some silicon. 
some RTV silicate on these corners right here where the oil pan gasket meets the oil pan. And then you should follow the recommended oil pan. This is the torque sequence. It's kind of difficult to see on here. See how it shows one, two, three, four. Let me hold it right there. So if you want to get a look at that, you can use that for reference. And it's supposed to be torqued at 8.7 foot pounds of torque. Nine is fine, especially if you're using an extension because an extension uh, decreases the torque a little bit. plate with the oil pan on there's no possible way of me getting it in without removing the axle I tried everything trying to squeeze it around I don't want to cut it um, but I cannot seem to get it in so I'm gonna pull the axle so I can get this put back on and have it mounted properly and it's just really need really a dust shield dirt dust shield for the flywheel slash clutch which I do want to leave on there since I'm gonna be driving the car daily when swapping to the DC header, we're going to need to extend the wire on the O2 sensor. This is where the OEM location is. On the DC header, it's at the rear of the exhaust manifold. The old exhaust manifold weighs about 21 pounds. The DC header only weighs about 12 and a half pounds. Let's get the top portion of the exhaust manifold installed. Well, the header now. DC header is cool, it has the bracket to mount to the original bracket and reconnect your exhaust. Go ahead and feed your O2 sensor wiring up. Got mine right here and I'm attached to the O2 sensor foot plug. And lastly, get your air tube installed again right in here, kind of slides into there, easily enough, to 10 millimeters. And lastly, I was able to get that plate back on. I went ahead and pulled the lower ball joint out, that way it gave me room. Just had to pop the axle out a little bit just so I could squeeze the plate back in there. <laughs> 